Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Yet another entry with regards to this particular series, this time again focusing on cryptids slash monsters that are very large in stature. This particular entry was actually not suggested by anybody. I uh, came across this while I was looking at some of your other suggestions. So again, be on the lookout for one more video based on your suggestions and then a future um, mixtape also. But this particular entry, once I saw this um, off of the other information, I never have come across this particular incident before, the reports tied to this incident, but it is by far one of the most fascinating interesting tales I have ever seen and I do hope that this video gets a whole bunch of views because you and I uh, will both believe after hearing and reading this information that I'm about to present how fascinating this story is and the coolest part ever is that this really happened like this was documented this is a real event with possible evidence of this event so close and yet so far away and you'll know what I mean by that here in a minute what I'm talking about is the incidents known of the whatever it was. It could have been a cryptid. It could have been a monster. But it attacked a, a German submarine. And it has been known as the UB-85 atrocity. If you haven't heard of it, don't worry. I haven't heard of this before either. But after seeing this information and finding how interesting it is, I do hope that everyone else can see how cool this particular entry is. So the UB-85 atrocity, what is it? It's basically an incident that occurred back in World War I, specifically uh, during April 30th, 1918. And the way the story goes is this was during the last few days or the waning days of World War One. So the giant war, the war that started all wars, was ending at that time, but conflicts were still a little high between rival parties. And this particular incident took place between two parties, one being German and then the other one being British. And what had happened was this. Again, on April 30th, 1918, there was a British patrol boat by the name of Coriopsis and it was patrolling an area near the Belfast Lou and it came across a very mysterious item it wasn't the cryptid or monster itself uh, but it was actually a German submarine that was called the UB-85 and what was most peculiar about it was that it was just there right on the surface of the water it was not descending anywhere it was not about to hide anywhere it was just there right on the surface of the water completely still knowing that this British vessel, the Coriopsis, was approaching it, an enemy at the time was approaching it, this submarine was doing nothing. And that immediately, of course, alerted those that were on the British patrol boat, because, again, they were enemies of war at that time. So to have this submarine, a known German submarine, not do anything, that instantly created an alert. But what the British submarine found, the reaction that, that happened, was the complete opposite of what they thought would happen at all. Instead of the German submarine attacking this British patrol boat, um, instead they suddenly found and saw that the, the people there on the German submarine, the German soldiers, suddenly started escaping and evacuating that submarine as quickly as they could, as if their life depended on it. And not only that, but they were trying to go towards the British uh, vessel, the Coriopsis, as if they were trying to ensure that, uh, however they were trying to save their lives, it would be in the presence and hopefully in the safety of one of their enemies. And so whatever the British vessel did at that point, whoever was in charge, they decided, let's go ahead and let's capture these men um, because here they were trying to escape quote-unquote escape their own submarine trying to get away from it as quickly as possible how they were doing it uh, the story doesn't say maybe they were even jumping onto the water and trying to swim to the nearest boat nearby that Coriopsis but whatever happened all of the men were captured and in particular they found uh, the captain of the ship who you'll see a picture of here his name is Captain Gunther Kretsch uh, K-R-E-C-H I'm, I'm saying his last name correctly so being him being the most important figure of them all he was immediately interrogated as to what was happening why was the why was the german submarine 
above water? Why did it not descend when an enemy ship was coming across it? Um, and basically just trying to get you know some information on what the hell was going on. And so this is when Captain Critch uh, was able to talk to them and explain what had happened. He said, just that previous night, they were there, uh, I guess, patrolling their own area. The, the, the captain, his crew, and the German submarine. But they had to surface during the night because they want they needed to recharge their batteries. I don't know what that necessarily means. Like I don't know what kind of batteries that submarine had, but that's the way he described it. And so there they were at night. The captain with some of his men, and they were probably just taking a you know a calm break of sorts while they were waiting for the batteries to recharge. But this is all of a sudden there was something that surged right off of the starboard bow. Uh, picture this, you know, imagine that scene in the latest Godzilla movie when Godzilla was approaching that naval blockade right by the San Francisco bridge and all you saw was a gigantic surge in the water picture that but again at nighttime and with these men in and around that area and you can see how startling that would be because if the movie did such a good well presentation of that imagine if you saw that actually in real 100 percent life so this surge abruptly came right towards them and then a quote-unquote strange beast climbed out of the ocean and went right onto the submarine right onto that ship itself very fascinating because that whatever this thing was that was approaching them it did not hesitate one single bit it just completely climbed on top of the submarine and that's when all hell broke loose. Now, the only description known of this creature, this quote-unquote UB-85 atrocity, comes from the captain himself, Captain Critch. He says, he, and this is what he said as followed during the interrogation, he said, This beast had large eyes set in a horny sort of skull. It had a small head, but with teeth that could be seen glistening in the moonlight. Every man on watch began firing a sidearm at the beast, but the animal had hold of the forward gun mount and refused to let anything go. So, very fascinating. Um, here you had this creature, the, the way it's described, small head, uh, teeth, but large set of eyes. Um, it, you can kind of rule out a giant octopus because octopuses tend to be the complete opposite. They have a gigantic head and small set of eyes. Uh, they have teeth, but uh, they have that beak that's that's pretty much, um, you know, beneath uh, lots of layers of skin. Um, you can kind of rule out a gigantic squid because anything involving a squid, they have also gigantic heads um, along with very large eyes. Those are the most common features associated really with squid. And again, no real teeth, sort of say a beak as well. Um, so this is another level of cryptid, another monster of sorts that is something more on the lines of, like I had just mentioned in one of the other videos, like a leviathan or something else, something else entirely. It's not the usual concept, again, tied in with, let's say, a giant squid or a giant octopus. So what had happened was this creature again went on that uh, boat that they were on and it just all hell broke loose everybody whoever was available there took out their guns and just started firing as much as they can as quickly as possible the bad part of this was that that surprise that this creature attacked um, and the way the submarine was up in the uh, you know submerged above water or above water itself they had the hatches open I don't know the exact term on there but they had the cap the hatches open and the way that the uh, creature the size of it it was so immense that it was actually listing the 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 ship itself off to the side and at that point the captain said that he was so fearful because if it only listed just a little bit further then the orp then the open ports would drop below that water line and then it would the whole ship would start to sink automatically so knowing the danger that they were in whatever this thing that was attacking them um, it was all hands on deck, as much firepower as possible. They continued their attack as much as they could. Finally, uh, it was to a point where the creature apparently had enough, and it released the boat. It released it completely, and then it just went back underwater. So as quickly as it came on board and as suddenly as it attacked, 
whatever this thing was, this atrocity, uh, just went back into the ocean after it took enough hits, and that was it. Um, so the way the story goes next, the captain said um, they did a little damage uh, report. They tried to see what kind of condition their boat was in. Um, they noticed that they couldn't go under anymore because a part of the forward deck plating... Um, I don't know exactly like which area on that what what they were referring to, but it was damaged enough so that the U-boat could not submerge and escape. So they noted that the, with the attack that the creature had, it was to the point that they couldn't do anything but stay there. Again, shockingly and frighteningly thinking enough, stay there 100% in absolute stillness and hope that this creature does not attack them again. Well, that night descended into the morning, and then that's when that British vessel came across them, and that's when, of course, the tale goes back to the present at the interrogation there, where the men, knowing that this was uh, as close to a rescue as they could have as possible, uh, jumped up off and then ran as quick or uh, swam as quick as they could to the vessel, and that ended there. Um, and it, the thing is, that boat, um, this. Um, UB-85, once it was abandoned, the only thing left that the British patrol boat could do, because again, this was being a time of war, they could not leave any enemy artillery, any enemy aircraft, any enemy equipment, anything like that that they came across that was from the enemy had to be destroyed. So even knowing that um, maybe there, there's proof that the damage is there from whatever this creature was right there on the front plating of the submarine, they couldn't do anything but sink the ship because they had to ensure that once it was abandoned, no other German soldiers, nobody else, no naval officers, whoever, could come across this ship and use it for future use. They had to sink it right then and there. That's why I say earlier that physical evidence of this creature, whatever it was, this atrocity, is so close and yet so far away because all it would take is if somebody were able to be you know find this UB85 this uh whatever the damage was tied to this um ship if somebody could find it on the bottom of that particular ocean and bring it back up or at least take pictures of it they could hopefully find whatever the damage was that was tied to this mysterious creature and show it as proof 100% proof that yes, this thing happened, whatever this atrocity was, it is real, and it caused this damage. But alas, again, that proof is was so close, but had to be destroyed, tragically destroyed, uh, rightfully destroyed, to ensure that no other enemy could come across it. And again, the proof of this event comes from the noted records of the UB-85. There's a website called uboat.net, which chronicles the essential history of every U-boat and every other naval type boat that was tied in with World War One, and it lists the history of UB-85 like when it was first ordered, when it was first created, when it was first launched, when it was first commissioned. It even states on there the commander which shows the name Captain Gunther Kretsch that I had mentioned earlier and then finally it talks about the actual fate, quote-unquote, fate of the boat, and this is what they said, on April 30th, 1918, flooded through not completely a closed hatch while diving to evade gunfire of Royal Navy drifter Seriopsis, resurfaced and abandoned by crew while under fire from patrol vessels. No, 34 survivors, no casualties. Notice the interesting part, re there's two of them there. First one is resurfaced and abandoned by crew while under fire from patrol vessels. And then the other one being diving to evade gunfire of Royal Navy drifter Coriopsis. That shows that while the um, boat, that the vessel was there and the Coriopsis did come across it, the way the fate was presented, it could be that it was altered and said that that was instead that the story was too fanciful to the idea that something like a giant monster, a giant cryptid was attacking this boat and that's why it was sunk um, or just uh, eventually sunk because of what happened to the boat but here it makes it seem as if it was the actual Coriopsis that 
um, attacked the boat it's, and then also sunk it at the same time. No mention of any kind of monsters. But yet we have this other tale that mentions otherwise. So very fascinating on that. But the actual fate, the actual description of the boat exists and it's there. Um, but it just seems like the actual description of what happened to the boat that seems to be a little bit more mysterious so what do you guys think very interesting no the idea that whatever this thing was the UB-85 atrocity could be still out there it is big enough to take on essentially a whole submarine and those of you who have seen submarines um, know just how massive those things are and the idea that something is out there that could attack a submarine and survive any kind of attacks from the min itself um, but and the idea that this could be eventually covered up by the actual fate being altered very very fascinating um, and the idea again that 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 you come across something like this out there in the ocean the submarine from an enemy and all of a sudden these uh, these naval officers whoever they were from the German side uh, would swim towards you, you being the enemy, uh, as if they were swimming for their lives. I mean, that's what made this tale so fascinating. I mean, there's a whole movie that could be made about this particular incident. I mean, it's that fascinating, and I hope that somebody does is able to take uh, elements tied in to this incident and then create something, a movie, a TV movie, a real movie, something along those lines that captures what could have happened or what did happen with this incident. So UB-85 atrocity, great, great stuff. So thanks as always, everybody. Take care.